Hello, and welcome to Movie Buffers, Episode 7. This is Jordan. Uh, I just got done watching the Oscars. Did we really just uh, see Will Smith assault Chris Rock in front of millions and uh, millions of people? That's uh, something I think I want to talk about in a later episode, but I'm sure we're going to see the outcomes of that very, very soon. Like, maybe even tomorrow morning. Like, is Chris Rock going to sue him? I, I fucking would. Like, what the fuck was that, man? Uh, anyway... And this episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, this episode is about David Lynch. Three films. Eraserhead, Blue Velvet, and Mulholland Drive. Uh, I drove out to Indiana to record this podcast. Fumbled my way through three tolls. And I fucked that up a little bit. But this was a, this was a good time. These guys were fun. And uh, I, I got opinions on Lynch that I've never heard before. It was nice to talk to some people that aren't hardcore Lynch fans. Uh, because, you know, sometimes he can seem a little bit bloated and full of himself if you're not very familiar with him but i love him i never saw this episode go up so i reached out and got permission from the guys uh that worked on it and a good new friend of mine noah uh, to post this as an episode of this show because i really liked it and i thought it was a pretty good conversation with various opinions of all sorts i'd like to plug the movie chest podcast and shout out to noah and uh enjoy Welcome back, guys, to another Director's Dive. I'm, uh, I'm Matt, one of your hosts. I'm Alex, one of your other hosts. I'm Noah, uh, another host of yours. And uh, uh, I got brought a friend along, a big David Lynch fan. Uh, I met, uh, his name's Jordan. Hey, yeah, Jordan. my name is Jordan Sastikum, and thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming thanks on, for man. Coming. Appreciate you coming out We here. need a diehard fan here, because yeah. yeah. this is my first dive into Lynch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we went right into the deep end, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to know why you like Lynch, is all. That's my <laughs> big first question off, for the day. First off, state your case. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for real? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I... I'm a little bit more interested in the uh, darker stuff anyways. Okay. And yeah. if, um, it, I guess like I told you the first time that I came across Lynch was just laying in bed one time and the IFC channel was on mm-hmm. and then Eraserhead head came on. So yeah, that was the first, and this was like back in 2011 or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was like my first exposure to him. And so ever since that, like dark, like, like foggy kind of just yeah. like atmospheric, just chaos, which yeah. was just like, it was a nightmare put on. Yeah. Like I've never seen a nightmare so well translated. Like a fever on dream. Before. Yeah, yeah. Right. and like it literally felt like I was having a fever dream, like yeah, totally. some strange bed that. Yeah. So I was staying somewhere, and um, I feel that man. I like um, that's like I, like your the impact it probably had on you. I feel like it had a similar because like yeah, I was like I don't know I, yeah like fever dream and like yeah. nightmare dream like like it's. It felt like a trip, you know. Once like, it started, I was like having to prepare myself for like what's to come. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. once a, it was like the trash planet or whatever. It's just like <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, holy fuck, this is about to get weird as fuck. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like the fetus coming out of his mouth, like at the beginning and stuff. Yeah, it's just like okay, like we're getting into some weird. <laughs> it's super interpretive like, at the yeah, beginning yeah. of Eraserhead, right? Like, yeah, from what I remember, it's just, just like subliminal it's, like messages and it's, stuff it's there. totally what it is hazy it's, like yeah it's almost like it's it's um it's opening up kind of like this is the nightmare and at, like atmosphere and it's kind of like if you look around in the background there's hints to this isn't the actual reality that you're seeing it's like mm, displayed right. as like a vision okay yeah. so like the reality is actually there so he's just kind of it's kind of we're experiencing the dream of a reality whereas mm. in like the baby's actually there um, the the he's actually going to be deformed. It's not as actually as like as hmm. disgusting as yeah, he's translated no, yeah, on yeah, film, yeah, yeah. but in his head and in his dream, and it's it's kind of it's and it's not even quite a, like it's open to interpretation. He's yeah, explained right. it many times. He yeah, wants yeah. his audience to just feel it and experience it, yeah. whereas it kind of does have like an actual story going on, you know, and then oh, yeah. there's like the, the lady who plays like lust or whatever from across the hall. Mm-hmm. And then later on, there's like death. This, the, the lady who does the like song and dance right. and like squishes oh, yeah, the okay. slugs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it was like in heaven, everything's fine. Yeah. yeah. She's seducing him into death. Hmm. So it's like, this is the easy way out. Right. Whereas like you can yeah. just kind of kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was like, I, I definitely felt like, yeah, like it's like an allegory, right? Like there's like a lot of metaphors coming yeah, through. Yeah, metaphors and everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. And they're endless. So like this mm-hmm. is just yeah. like a chip off the block right. of just like. Well, yeah. I, I found Eraserhead to be like one of the, my more favorite ones out of the ones really? we watched. Yeah. yeah. I've only seen these three and then Dune. 
Um, but like you said, it's like a little more rich with like the metaphor of everything. Like, and it's clear that he's just like exaggerating to the to the yeah. most extreme. Yeah. Example to give you like the feeling that he's trying to evoke yeah. from like the fear of fatherhood, the fear of oh, whatever yeah. parent. Like when he looks like, over and sees stuff. the mother dog with like all the the shit ton of puppies yeah. like suckling. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's clearly like a, what you're supposed to feel with this character's mind and what he's about yeah. to go into with like the kid he's about to have. Yeah. And, you're diving into like that mindset kind yeah of but um and yeah another yeah. good touch i thought was just fun because i actually found this this one out of the ones we watched to be like the funniest maybe even though it's the most darkest oh, yeah okay there was yeah. like dark comedy i thought yeah. in this all over like with the plant on the desk it's just like a mound of dirt <laughs> yeah wait, wait. so you watched blue velvet right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. One one. this one was like it was like he was trying to make this one funny i yeah, thought a yeah, little yeah. more than other ones almost more in a like chaplain sort of way yeah. where like over like the top. silent filmy yeah. and like stick slapstick yeah. for sure yeah, yeah. 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 I, feel, yeah. I, I did like the dead tree plant yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just on, on his like bedside or whatever yeah. Yeah. Right. it's like yeah. why is that there yeah i know i think there is like more of like, Cause you can just watch like analyze videos on like mm. David Lynch's shit like I'm I sure. have in the past. I'm sure it just because, goes deep as fuck. Yeah. Well, right. because there's sometimes you know I I get like driven crazy and be become like a little bit obsessive, <laughs> over the plot. And especially yeah. when somebody is as like haunted as David Lynch is. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, I watch interviews yep. with him and shit. <laughs> yeah. He is like such a weird person, but everyone loves him. Like yeah. <laughs> everyone involved in working on projects with him is just like he yeah. is just a master at his work, but he's the nicest, sweetest like. Yeah. And yeah. And he talks like yeah. crazy, yeah. And, like, and that's his level of volume. Every fucking thing you're gonna hear out of his mouth is like at that level. And yeah. and for somebody who seems like it's almost, you know, um, it's you know, it's like kind of like on the spectrum a little bit. But uh, it's okay. like, yeah, he's and, like, super which, eccentric. He like very has to just be. like, yeah, right? and I mean, and that's just like who he is as a person. He's expressed. Yeah, it's know, like he's Tim like, Burton esque. <laughs> I guess right. you could say yeah. he definitely haunted. translates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's yeah. he's haunted, yeah. and you could tell he just tries to like put a lot of like dreams and visions he's had in real life and and format a story. Yeah, it around comes them. through. It's like yeah. it's trippy. Like it's very expressive. All yeah. of his work is very true, expressive. I thought. It's like yeah, it's open to interpretation too. Like I mean, that's like something that struck me right away just in that's like ingrained into a style i feel like you know so yeah throw up imagery and like what you pull from it is like what you know whatever feelings it drags out of you or that's like what yeah. you're gonna get out of it so yeah but yeah. for sure yeah i thought uh while it was like one of more like my more enjoyed movies i did think Eraserhead, it just has, it felt so long to me. Like, yes, it's and been I, 25 and, minutes. And with every of the, with all of his movies, honestly, they kind of feel long to me. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, they, especially yeah. when you get to like Mahal and Drive, oh, it's like woo. pushing three hours. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a rough but one. It's still like one of my favorites of his. But yeah. And yeah. Eraserhead's only an hour and a half. Yeah. Right. Should, it, it, they yeah, all it, feel long, and there's yeah. like 90 minutes, two hours, two and a half hours. They're all oh, different, man. but. Yeah, and yeah. I know he's made a lot of short films. So like this one probably could have been a short film, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's like, yeah, it's yeah. enough there still to be I, meaty. I was telling you, I was like, I was, I was, I was, as I was watching it, like I got, um, Videodrome vibes, like Cronenberg's yeah. and, and like by the end of Eraserhead, I was like, well, I kind of feel like I would just rather watch like something like Videodrome. Yeah. Right? Like it wasn't like, I don't hold anything against Eraserhead cause I do think like I did, I don't know, it, it was good. Like overall, I think I enjoyed it. But like you were saying, though, it's definitely one you don't really want to rewatch. No, yeah. <laughs> you know? After like, like that's, yeah. that's a big thing with I think all three of these for me was I'll never revisit these. Yeah, I have no mm-hmm. desire to go that's, back and watch any of these. I see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. But so, so you're just uh, so we got a, a different kind of opinion on Lynch. Yeah, like, yeah so, we got it. So we have all the varying levels. We went into this, <laughs> so you guys are kind of like dipping in your toes. Is this your first time? First like, time with David time? Lynch. Yeah, and, gotcha. like I've been wanting to watch Twin Peaks, but now I don't think I will. <laughs> well, if you kill people like this, you're definitely not gonna like Twin Peaks. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a style there that was he's going. Things that I liked, like Blue Velvet, was probably the best in yeah. my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, mm-hmm. But even then, at its best, I don't know. It was kind of kind of yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, I get. I've never seen any. I haven't seen David Lynch speak or do any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. This is like the first raw David Lynch, and then my <laughs> first, you went in raw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> went in raw. Yeah, and yeah. I I watched Eraserhead. That was the first one I watched, and it just. I like the long takes in movies where you could just eat up the scenery, but there's nothing to eat up in that in those no, scenes. It's yeah. it's pretty empty. Yeah, yeah. and it's just, just like beat okay, by beat empty. Cut this of. down just a little bit. Make yeah, it a yeah. twenty five minute film. For can, sure. You can interpret and in, yeah. interpret everything that he wants to get across in twenty five minutes, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Just with Eraserhead. Yeah. But yeah, you know. that's fair. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I see a lot of people having, a, you know, it's, it's, he's meant to rub you the wrong way. Yeah. So the he, fact that you even have that is like, he achieved something. It worked. With, like, yeah. yeah. Right. But he, he made you sit through a fucking hour and a half nightmare and right, he didn't yeah. like it. So, I mean, like, I mean, there's no shock that, there. That was like the, the one thing that really, like, I think just made a razorhead grading for me was the sound design. Yeah. Like, yeah. at a certain point, the droning, like, just did yeah. start to grade on. Well, me. everything looks yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, it's it's like, like, you're, oh, like God, a giant yeah. machine. But that's that it's effective, right? That's what it's meant time. to yeah. like. Yeah, right. it's like an industrial zone that yeah. this mm-hmm. person's just in. <laughs> and and I I typically like like I love dark movies and I like things that rub me wrong. My wife hates it because I make her sit through shit like that. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah. Once I got to I watched Razorhead, then Blue Velvet, and Mulholland Drive. I was last night. I waited until seven movie. o'clock because I was like. I just don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I had enough of David Lynch already. <laughs> you, yeah. see the, you see the two and a half hour runtime. Yeah, too, that's, like, that was intimidating yeah. because yeah. the Razorhead was an hour and a half and it felt like three hours. <laughs> Blue Velvet actually had a decent pace to it. It moved what, a little quicker. What is yeah, your okay. patience with like actually examining through like a story and then like picking it apart for its like value and not just its face value though? Is it, are you just are you somebody who likes to just kind of watch a movie? and have it done because like some people just want to watch a movie real quick and then some people like to analyze a movie and some people actually like to like watch a like painting happen yeah, in yeah, front yeah. of them which I, th- is- I think it depends too on the i don't like how he approaches the the painting if you will like if you yeah for instance my favorite is tarantino and he has long ass movies and mm-hmm. i watch those over and over again and i watch all his interviews and i just dive deep read his book the Tarantino book, same yeah. with the Coen brothers. I absolutely and, love Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. things like that. That that's kind of stuff. But those are, I guess, the pacing really bothered me in a lot of these. And to just me, the fact like that in it was a, so eclectic and yeah, so just yeah. In a movie, weird. there's like a a need to have it be entertaining. Not at like every second, right. but like you have to be able to craft it enough to know when the, when it's hitting, when it's not hitting. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you and in in an Eraserhead in general. Like you were saying, it's just like walking, a lot of walking, and right. it just doesn't add any. Like you get the message right away, and then it's like wait a minute to get the next message. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas like a, a good, effective movie would just continually kind of put that there, but push it forward. Like, like yeah. Um, yeah. Paul Thomas Anderson, I think that like uh, his latest one, um, Licorice Pizza, yeah. Yeah. is kind of like with the pacing and the story, like you're not there for action to happen all the time, mm-hmm. but at least it was there was enough substance that I was like involved with the characters. I, it moves. It wasn't his best film, but it was, I don't know, it was at least engaging enough. These did not have that for me. Yeah. And, you know, I like a long movie. I like taking in the story and the characters and everything, but it just felt like, I don't know. I didn't know any of these characters. Right. Yeah. And he goes for that too. He goes for like more no name actors as, as uh, except for like Justin Thoreau and like Naomi Watts was yeah. kind of him dipping yeah. into more popular yeah. people of that time. Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. 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 What a um, cameo. That was like yeah, fantastic. What a fucking man. cameo. What yeah. a sexy hound he was. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right? Sick um, <laughs> banging his chick. Man. Um, he really likes Kyle McLaughlin. Uh, yeah. And I, oh, I, dude, I haven't really seen much with him. I mean, we watched Dune. Yeah. That so was it really. I, and it, I couldn't nearly tell if I liked him or not. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Yeah, I would recommend. I would recommend watching him through the Twin Peaks series because okay. I, I, I would recommend the first season of Twin Peaks. Yeah, mm-hmm. season two it's fucking bonkers. That's what I heard. <laughs> you're go- yeah. And it's 22 episodes long, Holy so shit. you're not yeah, gonna want to fucking do Holy that. Fuck. And then there's uh, the return, no, the right. Twin Peaks, the return, yeah. which yeah. is just everything lynch has ever wanted to say with any of his work mm. and it ties in you know if it has like the eraser head through mahal and drive vibes not to mention mahal and drive was supposed to be a series anyway mm. back mm. when he first got on twin peaks i believe this was supposed to become his next kind of uh it, it's like an la version of twin yeah. peaks it's gotcha. where it's like yeah okay. whereas like twin peaks is like a whodunit like mystery story but it I becomes could, supernatural and very like bizarre mm-hmm. um yeah i think overall personally i my I had the best experience I had was with Mahal and Drive. I think really, I like, love Mahal. Yeah, Drive. it was. It's, gonna... It was close between Blue Velvet and them, but yeah, like I think Mahal and Drive. I, I'll take the low road there. on it because I I came out liking these movies. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. there's like a level of prestige attached that I would have expected when I mm-hmm. came, went in because mm-hmm. like it's they ride the line of being so bad they're good, mm-hmm. which to yeah, me right. it's like 
that's not a prestige movie. It's, it's a certain type of movie, but what, it's not. What like, he does with yeah. that is kind of creating atmosphere, though. It's because yeah. he, what you said with like no name actors, and then him having him have this soap opera y dream like acting yeah, style. Man. It's, it's, it's that's over the what top. he's going for. Yeah. As yeah. Whereas it's like, it's, I, I understand it's like a nitpick for some people. Well, because it people was weird. Are like, people are supposed to act good in movies. Like, yeah, what is right, this? Right, right. But right. it's like, not all the time. <laughs> he, when he's going for a story where he's like, it's not quite a story as just a, a dream and a nightmare. And then yeah. like, there's a payoff at the end with like Mulholland drive. He showed you the whole dream sequence first. And then where it was like her dreaming it because she actually had a fantasy of a, of like, did you guys get the, like she putting a hit out on this woman because she was jealous of taking. Oh yeah. I mean, from her. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then, I like, I got it, I guess. But the, yeah. There's a lot of like. A lot of it just doesn't work though. Well, it I, I yeah, liked Mulholland Drive for the first hour and a half when it was like a semi logical story. <laughs> and then yeah. it, he started to like shift. It's like he got to page 100 and then he's like, I, we got to fucking start shaking this shit up. I don't know how. We're yeah. just crossing yeah. weird threads and cro- yeah. doing this and this. And we're, we're going to jump this character to this character and then we're going to do this. And, well, that's. I mean, and it just. It didn't like. I, I appreciate twists and turns and, and like that stuff, but this right. one felt like. There wasn't anything attached to the twists and turns for me, but yeah. maybe yeah. I, and I'm sure that there's like threads that will like prove me wrong as fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that of yeah. like how well, much meaning is attached. The but thing like, is, like I said, there's like heavy like film analysts out there. Oh, that, yeah. oh, like yeah. that they could you could watch that movie 45 times and not find everything. Yeah. To whereas like just saying that it has no substance and no story and it doesn't work, it's just like that's not true. No. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. like you can go back and find the many many layers that that movie like holds and on, on top of actually a coherent story well, of her being a washed up actress. That's like yeah. one thing. If there's like one thing i could like nail david lynch down was for like every like no matter what movie because like even blue velvet like its concept is like pretty like real you know like, that was the most real he got yeah. with it. he still went into down to where it was like it turns into a realistic nightmare right mm-hmm. exactly where it was like it's that that movie's more driven with uh it's it's just more of a like psychotic drug trip yeah <laughs> whereas yeah. like you know with like daddy want to fuck and, yeah like, and frank and yeah up, dude, I, I mean as much <laughs> and i that movie took me so long to like yeah at first really yeah so um one of my exes showed me this movie and i just like instantly Oh, it was like it's. I was like it's an abusive movie. I was yeah, like yeah. I was like everything about it. Mm-hmm. Like it like touches you. It smacks you around. Yeah. It like it shows you like abuse in a like yeah. way that it's like almost glorified and right. like and like you know and and me coming from like pretty heavy life you know some shit can rub you the wrong way. Yeah. And like, but it took like years down the road where it was like this was his like studio kind of like i'm actually gonna kind of make yeah. a story for people mm-hmm. and, and this was before like dune you know yeah like, more dune narrative heavy big, you're just like yeah. more of a structured narrative it's i because guess because hollywood yeah. was becoming a little bit more aware of david lynch because mm. people are like look at this weird guy who right. <laughs> makes these weird steampunk nightmares yeah right. and um and yeah no well that's what's weird because like encountering maholan drive because we, we did the same order you did it alex like uh eraser head blue velvet and maholan drive mm-hmm. and so like when i like the mysticism that I felt like being introduced to Mulholland Drive, I was like, okay, like there is a weird like ambient overtone here that like, you know, it is kind of dreamlike or fever, you know, like fever like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so like when that like kind of twist happened, when like the box, like you get, you know, you know the blue box thing happens and right. like everything, like all roles kind of switch and you're like, yeah, you, you're basically like given all the pieces that you need, like the key, you know, like the those were symbolism. The, like the key was the symbol for the whole thing. Yeah, so it was like we were given that together because yeah. there were three different storylines and the blue keys and one real yeah, one. Exactly. So if you guys kind of like saw the last duel, I don't know if you guys watched like that. I did not, actually. Yeah, yeah recently. Not watched it yet. Yeah. But there's this thing going on where people are doing a lot of like it's like more flashbacky, but it's mm-hmm. like it's like there's a version of someone's story cut back, then this person gets a version of their yeah, story yeah. cut back, this person gets a version. Yep. So everyone's version is a little like it's like split uh, perspective kind of yeah. yeah. And everyone has like a little bit more of an interesting in their favor like version of the story. And whereas like in Mulholland Drive, Naomi Watts's character, it's all her version of the story. Like right, her dream yeah. sequence in the beginning where she's like the savior and like saves like this woman as opposed to the love story later where she mm-hmm. became in love with this woman and then the woman got a role that she really wanted because of a rigging that mm-hmm. happened. I don't know if you guys know like yeah. yeah. The, and then so the basically the movie is her dreaming that it all 
uh, it was all perfect, and she right. did the everything right. went her way. Yeah, and um, by like her killing herself at the end of the movie, I feel like it was just a vision of her, like as she's like doing, ultimately getting busted for putting a hit out on her. Right. Uh, so mm-hmm. there's an actual grounded story happening in the real world while this dream story is happening right yeah. before she kills herself. Which weird so too is like, like, which one is the real one? Then the real one is where she just kills herself, and you remember when she meets up with the guy in the diner to put a hit out on? Yeah. He yeah. fucks yeah. it up big yeah. time. You yeah. remember yeah. that? Yeah. That was the real world that's just, dude there were some funny moments for me and all <laughs> yeah, that pit was like, fucking fantastic that the wasn't what? that great the, oh, so, yeah. like, man i can't do everything by myself yeah dude that guy was the best fucking part it of starts me. with a oh, silencer yeah. and ends <laughs> yeah. with an alarm yeah right, right <laughs> it's like yeah. the worst that could happen yeah. it did. so bit me real good yeah, yeah dude <laughs> So, I mean, that's where the actual story happened. She was jealous mm. and went out and met this random guy to put a hit out on her ex-lover who got a role right. that she desperately wanted. And then he fucks that up. And then she gets des- like found out, basically. And then like is going to get arrested at the end of the movie before she kills herself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the whole vision before that is just her kind of like dreaming that this is all an L.A. beautiful love story, which is an yeah, homage man. to L.A. Because yeah. David Lynch I, loves L.A. Yeah. Right. I saw, uh, I was telling him, like I saw... Uh, comment that was like this is la la land's evil twin and i was like yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> yeah um yeah. but yeah there was like some like i i had like after watching these three too i had to kind of give I, I feel like i had to give him props just like tech technically like cinematography because like oh, dude. dude his transitions and like his editing is you that, know it's that's what like for me like that's what was made like made his style you know oh my like god there's a scene the way in, the new, in the yeah. in the uh the return of twin peaks on the showtime where that is like such a f- it's almost like the same kind of scenario as mm. this like just botched hit and but it's like more fucking hilarious <laughs> but you, i'll let you guys see yeah, that one day yeah, <laughs> to yeah, find for sure. that. but um no, but no. there's just like a witness of his brilliant because david lynch is also somebody that will fucking grab that camera you know mm. he like has oh, yeah. a specific yeah, yeah. Ver- vision and like and he 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 could just like he maps all that shit out in his like in his in his head yeah know? and yeah he has he can tell a like studio story if he wanted to but he doesn't want to yeah. because dune happened that's what i heard after dune right. that's why he <laughs> went back to like low-key low he budget. disowned dune and yeah. he like doesn't he doesn't even want his name yeah. on it. i actually didn't mind it i mean i watched it yeah. for the first time this year but, i don't you know. think it's that bad mm. no. yeah. it's it's there it's like earnest you know yeah, like he right, really right. is doing his best and it's like not bad you know, again like i wasn't like convinced epic. with kyle mclaughlin on dune even so yeah. like even when i watched blue velvet i was like ah. laura dern for me in blue velvet laura Dern's just oh, was like was oh, great so you know great, she yeah. nailed it but um yeah i don't know blue velvet for me it was for me it's like if i had to rank them it'd be Mohan top then blue velvet then Eraserhead. Yeah. that's just i think that's just my blue velvet brought to you by heineken yeah, <laughs> what a, what a Paps blue ribbon. <laughs> that shit. Fuck that shit, dude. That's like, that's. Oh yeah. man, that's the most quotable line of any of his movies. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like, I was actually at Heineken. Work. Fuck <laughs> that shit. I was at work and I, I said Heineken, and one of my coworkers was like, "You seen Blue Velvet?" And I was like, "Not yet." And he's like, "Come here." And he pulled up uh, on the in the conference room. He pulled up that scene. He's like, oh, no. Heineken. Fuck this <laughs> shit! You're like, oh great. It's just funnier too, because like, like what the fuck? he like makes a point earlier to be like, you like Heineken? I, yeah, I like that Heineken. That was such a like, weird conversation. Yeah, I was like, I guess. And like, yeah. later, she's he's like in the Budweiser. Oh, Heineken. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what's Heineken like. That many times. It's, it's more silly. of like a tongue in cheek silly thing. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah, see yeah. in Twin Peaks where it's like, damn fine cup of coffee. Like it <laughs> always fucking is said. So Someone has to acknowledge the coffee from this time. It's it's just kind of like you know, almost like those old stories your parents watched on like old you know movies right. yeah. when yeah. you would grow up. He's throwing just, it all back. It's and, just the chicken right. soup of like memory and dream and chaos mm-hmm. and love. It's just he's yeah, he's, uh, he's a perfect poet of chaos and in instance. I really wish he did more these days, but Twin Peaks: The Return is the last thing he's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is there and, plans for more? Because he only has like I, six. What he's doing or... now is he tells you what day it is and what, what the weather is. Where really? he's at. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Sunday, and he's like, watch his Instagram. It's funny. He's like living in a he's living in a different reality than all yeah, of us. Yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. Like, which you know I admire world. it because, yeah, I mean, can you? I, I would. Make, there's nothing like being in a in a dreamlike state in a in the chaotic world we live in right now. True. <laughs> Where I would love to be like just get a glimpse of like just the disassociation <laughs> that he's capable. Of. Whatever his mind, yeah, yeah. And the stuff that's turning in there. Yeah. Yeah, at least yeah. he's happy. It sounds well. It was like the the mystical like kind of overtone. I think really helped like any tropes or anything that like any anything that like would dip into that like yeah. the mystical overtone like 
helped support that, you know? And I was yeah. like, it is kind of wacky and weird. Well, and I like how... Don't, like, ref- self-referencing. Yeah, in both Blue Velvet and Mahan Drive, he has characters that, like, halfway through the movie, it's like, isn't life strange? It's just getting stranger. Yeah. It's about to get weirder. <laughs> yeah. like, and it's yeah. just, like, so self-aware, yeah. but it, I actually, like, respect it because he's just, like, he's he's voicing his own writer's intentions through yeah. his characters. Yeah. And it's just, like, yeah. Yeah, like, even the director... He's, like, he's doing it. The yeah. director in Mahan Drive, like, he gave advice to Naomi in that acting that was scene. That hilarious. Was like, that is literally that had to be like something that David Lynch just like and it was like bad direction I was like is he like saying he's a bad director (laughs) too (laughs) oh yeah well because that was yeah also just another thing in her dream like head you know yeah Yeah, right like there's subtle little details in his stuff that tells you what's dream and reality. Like you could look mm. at like a mud puddle that doesn't make a sound or something. Mm. Like there's really little things that you can wow. like be like, oh shit, we're not in the. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, That's it's crazy. Kind of fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. You can go back and watch that. A well, bunch yeah, of no, because yeah. I, I like near the end of Mahon Drive, I was like, man, I was like getting a little Pulp Fiction like stuff going, just because it's like you know, like he was yeah, playing the like, timeline. That's what I mean. You're yeah. not sure yeah. where you're following all the time, but it, yeah, and, and and definitely was because the way they find the body in the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. is actually her dead body from right know, everything. and like it, it it it's still weird man i could watch it again and probably be like what the fuck was i talking what? about yeah. <laughs> like, that, that wasn't a, what? I mean, there's a different thing going on here it's a yeah. different movie like yeah, that's like yeah. the line i'm like struggling with is like is it the re there's no rewatchability to me yep. because of just how it's paced and how it's like not yeah. as like yeah. if effective or whatever right. but in order to like fully immerse yourself and enjoy it you have to rewatch it yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. like a weird crux that you're at I, with, I with David Lynch, like, you know? after yeah. watching it it's a paradox. i was thinking like on my drive to work today about Mahalan drive and i was like i bet if i rewatch this 16 more times i still probably wouldn't understand fully yeah. but i have no yeah. desire to even watch it a second time right, right. so i don't think i can fully enjoy <laughs> what he's trying to get across in any of his yeah. movies which is fine with me i mean yeah. i watched him i can now say i watched three david lynch movies yeah, no. his yeah. most notable yeah. movies i mean that's that was why, the point of this if anything right, right? To, right. Uh, yeah. dive into it introduce yeah. ourselves to that's why blue so. velvet to me was the one that stood out as like because it, it was like weird and it gave you those like metaphor stuff with right. like a little bit of like a race red whatever but like yeah, yeah. It, was, it turned into a, like a straightforward story after right. a certain point. Yeah. And yeah. it was like an effective story or like an engaging one. I will say like Dennis yeah. Hopper was lighting up the screen, dude. He, yeah. he was fucking yeah. doing that crazy like, shit. Yeah. Like, the, one of the greatest roles that oh, yeah. I've ever written for like, um, <laughs> and it just, my fiance won't, doesn't like him. She won't um, do it. Yeah. She <laughs> won't, she won't because not only because, she yeah so i mean like we we watch more like uplifting like comedy things together so yeah, I, yeah. I, she's not a big fan of like horror film and and like stuff or yeah. even like deep dive like analyzing movies she's like okay that was a good story i don't know why you're so obsessed with it <laughs> and, like, yeah. but you know some like i said some people watch movies they take the face value oh, yeah. um she sees a lynch movie she sees a very uncomfortable like nightmarish experience um, like for i sure, said yeah. too like um she doesn't like a lot of the 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 violence towards not only just people but he's really blunt with the way he's just like slap a like lady around and stuff. yeah, yeah. that's that did put me off on blue velvet a little bit i was right. like oh fuck this there's, is like making me uncomfortable for there's sure like weight like, to it that's why you're yeah. uncomfortable though right. it's yeah. like it's it's true to life yeah. and then like you yeah. can feel his emotions coming yeah. through exactly right. and like so we've we i've had to talk with her before too because she's she's you know and i'm not gonna speak for her too much but um which the one good point she had across was like i feel like he has a problem with women and he mm. might like to just like see them dead and bloody yeah. and like all that. and then like i'm looking yeah. through his catalog and i'm like okay so a lot of his stories actually do have to do with some dead chicks yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and um but then like going and diving diving deeper this has been said about him before this has been said many times by him like people have called him a lot of things but I feel like he's just like because he's that misunderstood, mm-hmm. and um, and even the actresses that have worked with him have like stood by him uh, like to the very end and right. like be like we understand him, mm-hmm. yeah. we understand his stories, and, right? Like, and it's yeah. and I know it's like probably pieces of him that he puts into the characters, but I don't think it's like fully him. So right, yeah, him, exactly. Like, wanting, like you said, wanting to see women hurt and stuff. I don't 
think that would be necessarily true. I think yeah. those are the characters yeah. that he wrote. You know, yeah. the, the character mm-hmm. and the the well, I like to write stories too because I mean, she helps me write like edit scripts mm. and stuff. Yeah. and mm. like I recently had one, and you know, there was like some stuff that's like too rough for. So like, it's just kind of trying to explain to you know people that you know they watch a movie and they're done with the movie. Yeah, when you're like diving deep and like you need that stuff about yeah. a complex story or that's you're writing point. a story, like you're more. Uh, it it could seem a little bit more. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah. you gotta yeah. separate. Yeah. The creator from the characters that he's yeah. writing that's a one of the scripts i wrote for my final project for college they didn't like it because i put some choice words in there and like you shouldn't use those words like okay. right but the character's using it i'm not yeah. you know I, i'm not going around doing these things this is that character and exactly. this is you know it's yeah. building his yeah. i don't know yeah it's like the, the think about the reason he's putting these things on screen and it's like for me it's like yeah like like you're saying like a lot of bloody girls and like deaths you know it's yeah. a lot of surrounding a lot of that stuff but it's like meant to elicit a feeling of like empathy and you right. know connect you to like you know these things aren't pretty these things that are happening right. yeah. so you right. know and they're we could say you know, a lot about like anybody you know like we could say anything about pt anderson quentin tarantino yeah. like we're gonna dive into anybody and more mainstream directors together or like let's look at michael bay and what he does with like megan fox and shit, you know? <laughs> right like we want to yeah. talk about going down a route that's kind of like disgust i think David yeah. Lynch should be way off that i actually, yeah, 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 I actually you know? found like mahalan drive i mean it gets dark at the end for sure but yeah. like blue velvet they're they're like hopeful movies almost yeah, like yeah blue velvet is like it has and, a happy ending. He has yeah, like you know, a like, cheesy. Yeah. All you need is love. He has yeah. a cheesy "I love you" scene in like yeah. every movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And well, that's like, the thing. Is he goes he wants for it. People yeah. to know he does have a human, like some sort of humanity, right. To yeah, him, right? And that he does believe in love. Yeah, he right. believes yeah. in true it, love. You could tell right? like he wants it to be real or yeah. like because, feels it. Right? And like a lot yeah. of his stories, you can tell it seems like you're being lifted out of a nightmare. It's not like he's keeping you there. It's like you know, it's just kind of like and you ebbs and flows, like dipping you in and like yeah, where he's like, this is my brain and now you can and, uh, <laughs> take a break like, from it here no yeah. wait a second yeah <laughs> that's, and that's where i was res- and that's where i was res- what i respect and and i do see it's not like no that's heavy like- disagreements or like mm-hmm. i have to been re- like in the beginning and also before i really wanted to make movies yeah did not yeah this these yeah. movies will definitely rub people a wrong way or such a wrong way where it's like yeah I, i'm good on that you know yeah. like i don't want to and, and i've only seen and that's a matter of taste race your head like twice and the holland drive i've forced myself the third time to watch because it's long <laughs> yeah and, like, yeah and you know what it is and i've already watched and read about it yeah, and fair. so there's it, the rewatchability there's not a lot so that's why it's great to experience it yeah, take yeah, it all yeah. in at, as, as much as you can yeah leave it leave it alone yeah. and like, <laughs> let, let it hopefully let it leave you yeah, yeah hopefully <laughs> let it leave because there is some shines where i get like flashes of like oh that's lynchy you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. something yeah. weird's weird, happening like, here yeah that dresser looks weird you know, <laughs> yeah eraser head on the other side of that like hopeful spectrum is it just goes all in on the fucking darkness all in end. on all, and yeah. it's the most i think pessimistic thing yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah, yeah. Most except yeah. for actually, yeah. how are you on like um on like horror and and if you, Lost Highway? Mm. Yeah, I wonder. Um, I I would check out Lost Highway. That one's a really truly haunting one. It kind of like mm. has it's kind of like a darker like more vampire like mm. like story. To yeah, like it, gothic or something. Yeah, really, and it and it is just like a nightmare. But it's like more of just like evil. Yeah, land. And no. like, dude, I, I want the real like gritty feeling. It was like Lost Highway is one of my favorites by him. What's yeah. Wild at Heart like? Because that one, yeah. that I'm was curious weird. I about. forgot the title of it. And I've been meaning to bring it up because that's the Nick Cage and yeah, um, right, and yeah. Laura Dern one. Yeah. And that one is kind of like it's more. What's that one? Um, natural born killers you know okay like, that's kind of what like, i was imagining a little yeah, bit yeah so it's like it's more of just like a road trip love story but in a lynch tone and it's yeah. actually very good as well cool and it, I'm, it's not on, one maybe. of my favorites of his but yeah i still love it dearly yeah. And, yeah. i gotta get a dose of nick cage every now and then anyways. oh dude yeah, so. you can get a dose of lynch cage lynch lynch cage, <laughs> lynch lynch cage. cage. Yeah. <laughs> that's gotta be crazy man yeah, yeah. right <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, i can only imagine Right. pound a bang and then Dude, but like, take uh, on the world bro. Thinking, i was like thinking about doing it i was like back in the day it makes sense why like uh, i don't know if it was like frank herbert or whoever whoever approached him but it would make sense they want like lynch to do something like dune that's like right. you know like a weird kind of like ominous yeah. tone mm-hmm. like uh, yeah. different otherworldly like yeah well so. i was telling you at work like about like, 
um to just the, the back where we were like frank herbert chose lynch kind of to yeah. take on that story right, for right. a reason because he saw like a racer head and he was like this guy can take you into a different Immerse world you. yeah right just yeah. like dune is supposed to be it wasn't right. supposed to be some you know uh, another star wars or just like right, star yeah. like uh, should be like a space s- opera. slice of another universe type of thing was, yeah, yeah it was supposed to literally be like translated into another like language everything was supposed to be fucking yeah, weird just... like the the <laughs> shields and shit like yeah, this right. looks yeah. so weird in yeah, Lynch yeah, one dude. Yeah, yeah. um like it uh, looks like uh, like lego and shit yeah <laughs> like minecraft yeah, yeah. Minecraft roblox yeah. Yeah. yeah but um i mean i and i could still like say the same about like the newer one the, the new dune like, right you turned me on to yeah. actually getting back into dumb reading dune now because mm-hmm. uh i was i read i watched your guys's uh <laughs> our dune oh, okay. episode on yeah. the dune episode because uh um, I didn't get it, you know. I didn't know like the really? the, the the new one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen the Lynch one. I was like, it seems like a, like reprint of that, and mm-hmm. then also just didn't look. It was I get you. Zendaya and and, yeah. and all of them, the, all the yeah. mainstream guys, you know. I was like Zendaya looking at some sand <laughs> yeah. with the like, fucking sun crying. in the background. Yeah, yeah. 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 and then Two like. Hours really hoping that they do the rest of it because i'm almost done with the first one and now i'm like the I'm second half of the old dune I've, i haven't read the book or anything but yeah. i watched the old one and it looks like it gets fucking crazy yeah she so like, up, i'm man. curious if this new one will like amp it up a little bit yeah i'm hoping so and because go for it, it seemed yeah. like another like generic action kind right of, like, movie. That, that was yeah. kind of my thing like it was visually stunning and mm-hmm. like auditorily stunning you know like the sound design was all good yeah. uh it didn't have like the like iconic impact i was hoping for yeah right? but so if anything it had like the similar impact i had of the original dude with, right, with, yeah, with, right. um, with the, like, yeah they with tried the it yeah. was like i was like oh, i got the gist yeah yeah and for it was sure really weird but yeah and i watched blade runner like earlier like or last year now um uh, um right but right. like and then we came to the similar conclusion it's like well like if someone was going to redo dunes like denis villeneuve was like probably a pretty good choice yeah. i guess yeah, to like yeah. reinvent it you know or yeah the new yeah. blade his blade runner that yeah was great. that one's fantastic yeah I love such that a good one. One. yeah really i was like so impressed by you it. can't tell like for me like doing with his style it's it's just kind of that's why it felt a little more empty to me it's more of the same mm-hmm. like that uh mixed with a rival it's like yeah, you, you kind of yeah, feel yeah. he's doing he did it okay. again and with yeah. Dune. a little bit weirder yeah. but like, yeah yeah yeah, did yeah. It, again. it was weird how arrival that movie yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I didn't, yeah. ships landing yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It, he's got it he's got a style and tone yeah. uh, i like how I, we could still talk about this because lynch directed dune i guess it's, it's connected <laughs> it's connected it's, right? yeah it's, it's related an inception of uh, <laughs> uh, uh podcast uh, conversation. yeah <laughs> Maybe we should just. I mean, is Villeneuve in next? Who who are we doing next? After? Oh yeah, the next like director's yeah, dive. Take, yeah, I don't take know. A pick here. I, I picked Lynch because I knew I had never experienced it, and I yeah, knew it, like I was missing something. Yeah, right. I had to get in, and I'm glad I did. I will watch the now. rest of his. I, yeah. I, I guess I wouldn't I, say better, but I, 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 I want to. I'm like yeah. intrigued, and I was like, yeah. I liked his stuff enough to want to watch more personally. Yeah, yeah I, my so. opinion is watch more. Yeah. Force yourself through season two of Twin Peaks <laughs> so you can watch the new shit because yeah, the okay. new shit is that is that like it? Yeah, is it like it's, elevated? It's pretty, my yeah. favorite thing by him right now i think i hate that it was shot digitally because his Mm. film is like his thing Mm. and you could and it just looks very digital so it's different from the old ones but the story and the it's it's nuts Mm. it's awesome cool i mean that's good to hear that like it's he's still doing good stuff you know even so just think that when you're like powering through season two like all right there's good (laughs) light Light at the end of the tunnel (laughs) baby yeah Yeah. and then like the end well because uh, yeah well the thing is is like lynch went through it was like production hell. Like in season two came mm-hmm. on, they were like, you need to reveal the killer. He's mm-hmm. like, the point was not to, I have visions and all mm-hmm. these like weird demonized, like kind of ways to string it along and the yeah. supernatural things I'm sprinkling mm-hmm. through this. Yeah. And like the people are like, no, this is a, this is a detective story. <laughs> yeah. <to> like show <laughs> just That's why people are so watching. Like, they Fuck it. Know. And then he like shows who the killer is. Mm. Then goes down this weird fucking. Then it's like follows the townies around, and they're doing weird shit. Like one lady gets like brain amnesia and becomes mm-hmm. a high schooler again, and it's the most cringe shit <laughs> that you'll see. Is this lady jumping around trying to be a cheerleader? Oh right. And um, you have to get through it <laughs> to get to like the really you just gotta good, do it. Yeah. nasty, disgusting, uh, like Lynchy yeah, like, yeah, visions yeah. that he's coming with uh, with uh, Dale Cooper, yeah. which is um, spine chilling kind of stuff. Yeah, which is yeah. Kyle McGlo- 
McLaughlin's character okay. later, and like he starts getting visions, and it's all getting put together, and then there's more going on in the world of Twin Peaks. And I watch it every year because David Lynch became of somebody like you know I started where you guys were, where it was like yeah. okay I I get it. I, I think I'm a better movie writer than that. Kind of thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. everybody, I, I, I used to be that fucking yeah. cocky. I mean, yeah. if anything, yeah, that's it. There's inspiration there, I yeah. guess, right? Yeah. yeah, definitely. And it's, it, he's given me the balls to do more in my scripts. He yeah, is bold. Sure. He's like, given without me the a balls doubt. to, yeah. like, when you hit a fucking, when you're writing something and you hit a wall, he's like, spit it the fuck out and just yeah. let it, like, bust that wall like, down. If, yeah. if, you, if it's haunting you and you think it's going to scare other people, write it the fuck anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. like, like also Tarantino's got a similar like yeah. people are like the first of course the first dress for you and then you know the rest you got to tone it down and yeah, stuff, yeah. Right? Right. chisel it Lynch's out. is like let your brain take you on a journey which I have taken a lot of advice for him like mentally writing shit and yeah. to whereas like I'll read it later and be like I'm I feel like people would read shit I wrote and be like that guy's kind of nuts got something here, yeah. my, my girlfriend definitely is like been like <laughs> You touch me, you know, like looking at me while she's cool? typing yeah. away. And she's like, okay, but um, it's like because you have to have the balls to blow someone's brains out. You yeah, know? Like you have sure. to have the balls yeah. to like show you know someone getting smacked around or yeah. a word being used, you know, because in a sense you're telling a story and you're 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 trying to like yeah. actually give a character feelings and hurt right. those feelings. Yeah, in some give sense, truth. You know? Yeah, you're not give risking anything. Depth, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, because now I, I, to be honest, everything I watch now sucks, dude. I mean, <laughs> everything on Netflix is coming out. It fucking sucks. <laughs> everything it's coming out lately. I haven't seen Licorice Pizza yet, but it's starting oh, yeah, to just yeah. fucking suck. Yeah. And, like, I wasn't a huge fan. Yeah, I have to like at least give Lynch props for like just like I mean, if nothing, he's an artistic director. You know, like these yeah. are artistic movies and like it's, he's almost visions, like smoking. Like, He's in smoking indoors when it comes to art. You know, right. it's like people yeah. say it's okay because you're. But well, take your liberty. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like I guess you're. Uh, you're it's film- art. Yeah, yeah you're, right. you're doing a play in here. I guess you can smoke in here. <laughs> and Got to commit. Yeah. I love. I love him now, and and I I do recommend just watching more of his work because he becomes more of a drug than anything. Mm, okay. Because I, I can kind of see that man. Like I, I feel revisit like, yeah. Twin Peaks every year because mm-hmm. that's the one thing that I know is i could watch a lot of him Mm -hmm. and get just this weird vibe and see new shit and Mm -hmm. and his movies not so much i don't revisit them also because i know they're what they're and i'm like across but but my i think my point was like let's have lynch do an mcu movie these are the big well i mean dune was his uh, big (laughs) franchise (laughs) because that was before people thought comic book movies would be a thing right superhero stuff gonna make money i think the point was that uh, lynch is unapologetic and it's nice and refreshing it is in that aspect but yeah you know nowadays you have none of that everyone's saying i'm sorry everything's sanded uh, off now i think that's a good place to maybe like all agree on where it's like Lynch isn't the garbage coming out today, I guess. No. <laughs> like, and the no. thing is, when I was raising He's unique. it, it was yeah. like, yeah, I won't ever revisit these, but they got their point across. So, yeah, you know, they for got sure. My, my two and a half stars. Well, and yeah. that's what, like, every every one of these movies, like, dragged at some point for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, like, that yeah, by the end of the day, I Michael still, like, Keaton, pulled a lot of value from I was from like, him. okay, where are we going with this shit? I know, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for yeah, giving man. us like. No, we, we I'm really glad we had like a, a true Lynch fan here. Yeah. To, like, give I us mean, I wasn't. I, I told Noah I wanted to do this yeah. before I even heard you guys were doing a Lynch. Thing. Yeah, like, dude. I was like, yeah, I, I, I brought it to up. Talk about movies. And oh, yeah. like, well, we're watching these three like David Lynch movies right now. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck. Some weird like, fucking act. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Some Lynchian <laughs> universe <laughs> crossing happened there. We just happened to you know spark a conversation. Like I feel like I don't know how much we want to talk about, but. If you let the person that we're working for right Harry? now, yeah. and Harry is like his shorts that he sent to me, and I've already given him that compliment. Like, I get such lunch vibes yeah. from, especially his dialogue style, yeah. the way he's having his actors act, hmm. and yep. it's like it seems like it creates this dream like ambiance that like his movie. After watching these three, that confirmed my like taste in it, and like or my trust in Harry because right? I was like and I was like you, I are watched you his shorts this movie a little bit more now. Like, yeah, exactly. I was like watch and then like watching his shorts too. Like I was like that built my confidence, and then watching these, and now I'm like oh yeah, yeah I'm like all in like to, yeah. to, to like yeah. mess with this universe, this weird you know just get 
guerrilla style filmmaking in and, and do something weird. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> because more of the more intense parts that we were coming to in that script, yeah, that it was like so like mo heavy like, monologues and the and, heavy yeah. level, and like you're like this isn't like real life, but it's also it's not like based mm, like it's, it's like not weird. far from my theater, you know? It yeah, like it's like yeah. lynchy, dude. It's yeah. lynchy, but yeah, awesome, yeah. man. It's been good. It was yeah, fun. appreciate yeah, it, man. Appreciate you coming back, out. Talk yeah. about something else. Yeah, for well, sure. yeah, exactly. Yeah, for, <laughs> yeah, sure, for man. real. <laughs> It was weird. It was a crazy journey to get here, though. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you how, guys, how, 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 you guys and your tolls, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I drive through five of them to and fro. So really? Ten total every day for work. Damn, Oh, man. my it's God. Fun, uh, so what kind of, you know, I guess we could just. Like, yeah, yeah, we actually, you know, <laughs> Let us know here. which director we should do next. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. what do you guys think about Lynch? can be divisive, but I'm sure we got some people who want to. Yeah, I know he's got know. cult followings. Everyone, I mean, Twin Everyone Peaks has a cult does. following. And yeah, yeah, everything, yeah, everything has its fans. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, tune in next time.